Good morning and welcome to Mold Webinar Session 2. We're going to begin with Lesson 3, Mold Assessment and Weatherization Applications. What you will learn in Lesson 3, what is involved with an energy-related mold assessment, three steps of client disclosure, four categories of a home assessment which includes a, the general building envelope, the outside site, the HVAC system, and the occupied space of the home. Mold testing. Now here's a reminder, 5.14 energy related mold and moisture impacts. The weatherization assistance program is not a mold remediation program. DOE funds should not be used to test existing mold conditions identified during the audit, the work performance period, or the quality control inspection. As part of the Wix building assessment and as part of the energy audit, a mold assessment should be done too to assure existing mold conditions are noted, documented, and disclosed to client to assure existing building envelope conditions do not contribute to mold growth when weatherization measures are applied. Mold assessment means a visual building survey related to weatherization. Weatherization assessment does not include testing. You also have to conduct energy-related mold assessment used in the checklist as part of the Wix Energy Audit. Now a non-energy-related mold assessment is beyond the scope of weatherization. It's not an allowable DOE cost and it implies to the client you are a mold expert and you do not want to do that, so please remember that. Now protect yourself. You also have to provide documentation of the current situation that involves using the assessment checklist taking photos or videos and record and retain all of this documentation in the client file. Also disclose what you know and don't know. Your business is weatherization, not molds. Don't make claims you are not qualified to make and provide EPA mold publication. Client disclosure. Effective immediately, all states should ensure that their local agencies include some form of notification or disclaimer to the client upon the discovery of a mold condition and what specifically was done to the home that is expected to alleviate the condition and are that the work performed should not promote new mold growth. Step one of client disclosure. Don't claim mold expertise. Share checklist results of observed situation. Share photos of findings. Stress that no testing was done to verify findings and obtain signature of disclosure on the checklist. Step two, if appropriate, indicate that weatherization services may need to be delayed until the existing mold problem can be referred to another agency for funding of remedial action. Client disclosure, step three, provide EPA publication, use the publication distribution verification form, and that main publication that we use is a brief guide to mold moisture and your home, and that is EPA publication number 402. K02003. Client disclosure, client tips to remedy molds. You need to clean, disinfect, and dry surfaces, lower humidity levels, clean and disinfect humidifiers, dehumidifiers, refrigerator pans, and air conditioning coils. Exhaust the dryer to the outdoors. Run a bathroom exhaust fan during bathing or showering. Use a range hood to exhaust cooking moisture. Fix plumbing leaks and seepage. Raise the temperature of cold surfaces with insulation or storm windows. And increase air circulation by opening closet doors and moving furniture away from walls. Now, with the weatherization building assessment, make sure that you follow your nose and follow your eyes. If you can see it or smell it, Molds are likely present. A general examination of the building is also required. You will need to examine the structure, look at the maintenance activities, occupancy patterns, visually look for mold and water staining, look for evidence of standing water, look for evidence of condensation, check the basement or crawl space and attic for proper venting and exhaust. Outdoors. Look at the soil grade or drainage toward the foundation. Check for standing water adjacent to the foundation. 
check the wall and roof damage, allowing water intrusion that may exist in the home. Check for missing or blocked rain gutters. Check for no downspout extensions. Check for firewood stacked adjacent to the house. And finally, check for excessive shrubbery around the foundation. Also check the HVAC system. Check the air intakes for debris, organic versus clean air. Check the filters in the system for any dirty filters, damp filters, or poor types of filters. Check the heat exchangers for dirty and damp coils, condensate pans, drainage, or stagnant water. And with ducts, check for contamination and moisture. In the occupied space, you need to check for plumbing leaks, check for water stains on walls, ceilings, and around windows, and check to see if there is a musty odor inside the home. Check the surface condensation, especially during mild weather. Check for any mold on carpeting. Pardon me. Check humidifiers. Check window air conditioners. Check for lack of bathroom or kitchen exhaust. Check clothes dryer not vented to the outside. Check for firewood stored indoors. Check for wet clothes drying indoors. Now, exterior wall mold. Let's test your assessment skills. See all of this mold inside these wall cavities here? Well, we ask ourselves, how did this happen and what's the solution? Well, what happened is there was an exterior wall with a poorly installed vapor barrier which allowed for condensation to form in these wall cavities, thereby allowing for mold to grow in there. Mold on insulation. Let's test your assessment skills. Mold right in here. How did this happen? Well, what happened is there was high humidity leaking around electrical outlet with air leakage from the outside wall causing condensation and mold. Pretty hard to believe, but that can actually cause and allow mold to grow. Mold in the attic, problems and solutions. Test your assessment skills. Here's mold growing here. What happened with this situation? There was a bathroom exhaust that exhausted into the attic subspace and space and allowed for mold to grow because of the moisture that it created. Mold in the bathroom. Remember these pictures and tips from a previous lesson? There's mold growing on the walls and up in the ceiling. You can see a better shot of it here around the exhaust fan. Carpet mold. Test your assessment skills. See the mold on these sections of carpet, the dark places right here. Well, how did this happen? And what's the solution? Well, actually what happened in the laundry room, a washing machine overflowed one time and it got the carpet wet, which allowed for mold to grow. And the only practical solution to this is the consumer needs to get rid of the carpet. Mold evidence on walls. Down here at a floor joint, you see mold growing pretty bad situation. And extensive mold in a wall cavity. See these areas here? Now what caused this to happen is there was just a simple pinhole pipe leak in one of the water pipes which got that area wet and allowed for mold to grow. So just little things like that can allow for mold to grow. Well thank you very much for your time during this lesson and that concludes uh, mold session two in the mold webinar. We will see you at another time to conclude with the other sessions. Thanks and have a great day.